Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in today's video, we're gonna do episode four of this reverse engineering series. And so this is gonna be the last episode and just like the three before it, where we looked at quick surface personal and fusion, we are gonna jump into plasticity and talk about some of the tools that we have available. Now, we've already done a couple of videos in plasticity about scan-based designs or, or reverse engineering. Uh, Peter at Take Refuge 3D also did one. Uh, we sent him a scan and he went through the process talking about some of his approach and tools and so on. And it's important to note that plasticity has some mesh-based tools in it, but it does not have the same level of tools that you'll find in something like Quick Surface or the tools that you're gonna find in uh, even Fusion. Now, both of those, Quick Surface is obviously a dedicated mesh-based reverse engineering software. Uh, Fusion has some of these tools sprinkled in, like free forms that can snap to a mesh or mesh section sketches. Now, plasticity is improving all the time, uh, and this wasn't its initial focus or goal. It's really meant to be a hard surface modeler to support things like uh, graphics design, visual effects, things like that but we can still use it to our advantage. So what we're gonna talk about in this video um, specifically is going to be how we can use the tools in plasticity to try to reverse engineer complex shapes. Um, in this video, I'm not gonna get into doing this inside recess piece or the openings like we did in the other three videos. Uh, if you wanna do those, those are fairly straightforward. There are, again, some tools. I'll talk a little bit about building some of that out, but we don't have any tools, at least at this current time, where we can extract a curve from the mesh. Uh, that's just not something that we have available in plasticity yet. Maybe it'll come in the future, I don't know. But what we do have is the ability to draw directly on the mesh, so basically snap to the mesh, and we have a tool called Constrained Surface. I'm gonna look at both of these options. We're gonna talk about how they work and kind of get a general shape for you. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do, just like with Quick Surface, just like with Fusion, we're gonna to try to get the overall shape. All right, so we're not gonna worry about where it rolls down on this bottom section or on the top section. What we're really gonna focus on is the big broad shape. That's gonna be the hardest thing for us. Now, the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna use, or at least to start with, I'm gonna use what's called the Constrained Surface Tool. Now, if you do have plasticity and you wanna follow along, I'll leave a link in the description to the Fusion file, which is only the mesh inserted. When you go to the Fusion link, you should be able to download that as an STL, and then you'll have the mesh and you can insert it into plasticity if you want. All you need to do is go up to import append. If you don't have plasticity, we are an affiliate. So if you use the code LEAD10 at checkout, you'll save 10% on the Indie or Studio license. Everything that we're doing here today is going to be in the Indie license. We're not using Xnerbs or um, any of the other stuff. So to the best of my knowledge, I, I could be wrong here because it's not always super clear, but to the best of my knowledge, none of the tools that we're gonna to use today are going to be in the, um, in the studio license. They'll be available to everybody. All right, so default install, I haven't really changed anything uh, with the, maybe the exception of, um, you know, moving this to the left side, I don't know. But for the most part, everything is kind of as default. Units are set to millimeters, and we're gonna start by hitting F on the keyboard. And then we're gonna to start to type in constrained surface. Uh, so constrained surface is a surface tool, we're just gonna hit enter, that allows us to start clicking on the face, in this case of our mesh, but it could be on a solid or a sheet or surface. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna to start to just click a couple points and allow it to start building out a shape. When we click just a couple, you'll notice that in the middle, what we actually have is some low sections. So if we start to click more points on the face, what we're actually doing is we're creating more internal curves or we're dividing it up a bit more so that it can better replicate the shape. Now, the way that this actually creates the the surface that we see on the screen, it, it's, it's always gonna be kind of askew. So we're gonna extend it anyways and we're gonna trim it back. So that's not a big deal. Now, if you're trying to do this on a prismatic part, uh, basically what we would do is the same process, you probably only need four clicks and then we would extend it out and we'd trim everything. So it, it kind of works the same. But once we're done, uh, notice that again, we can kind of like do stuff like pull this out, but you'll notice the edges are kind of twisting around. So once I'm done clicking all the points on the surface that I, I have, I'm gonna right click and just accept it. 
Now I can select the edges and I can extend those out. I'm gonna just kinda do this individually until it extends all the way. <clears throat> and then this one here, just extend it out a bit further. So it's not perfect. Uh, it's gonna be based a bit on the clicks that we did. And there's obviously there's stuff missing in the middle. So we can't, unlike the way that we did this in quick surface and fusion where we use freeform modeling, we don't have a curve network in the middle of this thing where we can sort of approximate what's going on. So this is one way that we can start to recreate the shape. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hide that. Another way that we can do this is we can start to build out a curve network and we can loft the shape. Now, if we just pick a spline curve, what we can do is if you look next to the cursor, it says face or vertex. Now these are gonna be directly on the mesh. Now, if you happen to go to say a top-down view, uh, sometimes you're gonna notice that next to the cursor, it might say X, Y or X. Uh, so you just have to be careful and make sure that you are actually snapping to the face. And if you wanna override some of these constraints, so for example, it's trying to snap to X right now. And if I just, if I just click across here, we're gonna see what happens, I'll show you. And if I right click to accept that, if we rotate this around, you'll notice that it didn't actually snap to the mesh. It said X, X, Y face, but what it actually did was it took my first point, which is snapped to the mesh, and it carried it across along the X axis, and it essentially snapped it. Let me click a point on the face, but it snapped into that plane or in that axis in this case. So that obviously doesn't work. You can play around with the object snaps. So for example, if you turn off axis, it will prevent it from trying to do that X extension. Um, however, that doesn't get rid of the XY plane or the planar interface. So what I find the easiest thing to do is to come in and just have more of an isometric view. Uh, and if you hold down control, so unfortunately this is gonna override the face snap. So you may find that you toggle off X and just kind of work your way around right click, and then now we should have a curve that lies on that surface. So this is a way where we can start to build out this curve network. Now, the problem with this file is that we don't have anything in the middle, right? So if we start to, let's say, build out a curve here, we don't know how close we are in the middle of that shape. I'm gonna do one more just, you know, for demonstration purposes, we're kind of gonna go here and there. And then we could build another curve in between them. But essentially what we could do now is we could bridge these together by creating a loft. So that's L on the keyboard. I'm just gonna right click and say, okay. I'm gonna get rid of all the curves. I don't need them, so I'm just gonna delete them. And then I could, from here, extend out the edges. It's gonna go out with tangency. And so you notice that the shape is linear uh, by default. You could change it to natural. This is going to have a slightly different impact on the extension based on the curvature of your part. So if the linear option doesn't seem to work for you, play around with the other options. Uh, in our case, because this is a nice broad general surface, linear is actually the one that I want. Um, that'll work out just fine. But you might find that if you've got a lot of curvature coming into that edge, that natural and linear will give very different results. So again, just play around with them. All right. <clears throat> so. In this case, we've done two methods. We've got the first one, which was the constrained surface, kind of pick a bunch of points, and the second one, which was the loft. Now, looking at both of these, they're both relatively close. They took about the same amount of time. Uh, you know, I didn't spend a huge amount of time doing the loft curves, and roughly within about a minute, I could have a close approximation of the surface. Now, again, a big difference between something like quick surface is We've got an analysis. We can actually see, okay, well, we're a quarter millimeter high in this area, we're a quarter low in this area, and make decisions on whether or not that's okay. Um, in plasticity and in fusion, we don't have that. We just kind of have to look at this visually. Now you can turn on render mode and you can change the appearance. So for example, M on the keyboard, and if I make this thing um, red, this will give me a pretty good indication on where it's popping through, uh, but again, it's, it's going to be a visual approximation of the shape. And so those are the two main methods that we have when we're trying to recreate a surface. Now you could use constrained surface and I'll use it again here, F and starts typing constrained. 
Uh, you know, so for example, I could make a couple clicks, kind of start to build out a shape here, kind of work my way over. And then I could take this and extend it out. You're gonna probably notice some, some kind of funny business that's happening with some of these shapes. If you, if you click too many points on curvature, then it, it might not work out very well. But again, you just kind of have to play with it. And again, we can kind of see it's close. It's popping through the mesh right there. It's kind of close. And if we bring back that last uh, surface, what we can do is use the cut tool. That's C on the keyboard. And I can select, this is a, a cutter. We want to extend it all the way out. Sometimes this doesn't work. Sometimes you might find that uh, for complex shapes, you might want to manually extend the cutters out like this. And then we'll try it again. So C, use that as a cutter. Now it's fine. Uh, H is going to hide. And then this time we want to cut this one. So C, that. And there are, there are other tools um, that we can use to do this. But in general, that's the approach that we want to take. All right, I'm going to hide that one. And I want to show one more um, method over here. So let's go to the side. And all right, so now I'm going to take this curve. And again, I'm just going to kind of snap it to the face. What I'm doing here is I'm, I'm looking at the reflections, which is going to give me a good indication on where the curvature is changing. All right, and then we're going to do that same thing again. And I'm going to just, oop, let's try that again. I'm going to do that same thing again. I want to make sure I snap to the curve. So it says curve face, kind of bring this one down. And then what we could do from here, depending on the tool that you have access to is uh, we can go into a sweep. So remember this menu down here, this is contextual tools. So things that are available based on your selection. Uh, the guide that we want is this, right click, and then I'll hide those curves. And you can see now we've got a surface that is a, in this case, a rough approximation, right? So this method for the sweep um, is not quite as accurate for what we're doing here. It is certainly possible. You could also replicate this by, instead of doing a sweep, make a couple of other guide curves and you could loft between them. But the ability for us to draw directly on the surface of the mesh is really what we're talking about here. Right, so that's gonna be the basic overview that we have for how to do this in plasticity. If you wanna see a more in-depth video on plasticity, uh, we can do that. But again, the tools themselves are not really intended for this. So it's, it's just gonna be a little bit more of a struggle to do this type of work in plasticity. But uh, happy to, to give it a try. If you have any questions, leave them below. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.